Alright bro look, I'm doing this out of desperation at this point. I'm gonna be leaving for Chicago on the 11th, but the 10th is when the EP drop. I've already shown you guys two songs that's on the EP already. All my life, I've waited for the day I could call this my home. And since I was a young and I don't mean that they're your brother. Some niggas will stab you in the back. Five racks on me, 50 racks homie, I'm a flex with a tag. I'm gonna be dropping the other two songs in between the release of the full EP and please help a brother out by going to the description and clicking that link to pre-save the songs guys. It helps so much when the EP finally drops. Omni is trying his hardest to get you guys hate more part 6 before the 10th and yes I pay him in breadcrumbs of course. But yeah he's working really hard to edit that video for me and in the meantime here is a compilation of my jumping videos. I already did this for hate more part 1 through 5 and it got copyrighted, but hopefully uh, this goes better than, than that. Anywho, me rambling aside, grab some food or a drink, sit back and enjoy, or you could put this in the background if you're busy. But either way, I present to you JP's Jumping Compilation. Anime jumping. In most anime, there's always gonna be a character that gets jumped, usually the villain. But among the several anime that just has the villains getting jumped, not many does it as good as Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen took the idea of getting jumped and turned it into an art form. Never in my life have I seen somebody get jumped so masterfully other than that one scene in Jojo where they jumped. <laughs> but Jujutsu Kaisen has mastered the art of getting jumped. Today we're going to be looking at two of my favorite jumpings of not just Jujutsu Kaisen, but in anime altogether. Mahito gets the two-piece combo. First of all, how you gonna start the fight by j getting your face discombobulated, bro? This is how we knew you was already about to get boxed up, bro, because th this is how the fight started, bro. You, and he was flabbergasted too. My dog was like, hey, yo, what the fuck? There's no reason he should be able to do that. But Itadori kept on coming for him and, you know, throwing punches. And then this nigga says this. I'm just going to keep on pounding him. What did he say? Okay, bro, that is the most sus thing that you could ever say during a fight, bro. You're gonna pound this nigga? Hey, yo, like, pause, bro. You you couldn't have said anything else, but you're gonna pound this nigga into the ground, bro. Yo, like, dude, you might wanna calm down there. Pause. But as the fight goes on, Ito Itador is getting pressed a little, bro, and he finally catches Itadori and tried to fuck with that nigga's soul. And Sukuna was like, hey, are, are you touching my soul right now? Who the f- hey, Listen here, little nigga. This is the only time you will ever get to do this. You ever come near my soul again, I will f you in the- He didn't actually say that, but <laughs> look at this nigga Mahito's face, bro. He was shitting bricks already. But after catching right. Itadori off guard again, he was about to go for that blow. And then Nanami shows up. And this is when the jumping begins. Nanami was like, hey, yo, why is he bleeding? What happened to his face? Itadori was like, I, I kind of boxed him up earlier. And Nabi was like, hey, did you, did you let him touch you? Of course, Itadori said yes. And then Nanami's like, all right, bro, listen here, dude. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stop him from moving. And when we finally get an opening, we're going to give him that two piece. Bro, this was a calculated jumping, a premeditated violation. Oh. And so they proceed with the plan. And the jumping begins. Now, it took a little minute of them fighting him. But what they finally that? caught that nigga lacking. And the worst beat down in anime started. And oh my on, god, bro, the way they had this nigga's head turn. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel bad for this nigga Bahito, bro. He is getting boxed up. When I tell you Jujutsu Kaisen has some of the best jumpings in anime, bro, this is what I mean, bro. This is the definition of getting jumped. They barely gave this nigga time to even think. Yeah, that nigga's throwing hits back to back. Until Mahito got tired of their shit and opened the fucking domain expansion. And they left Itadori stupid ass outside because he didn't want to deal with his ass. But you know, Itadori being a little bit brain dead, he punches his way in. And that's when Sukuna comes out and was like, Hey, bro, didn't I tell you there wouldn't be a second warning? Uh, now I'm about to fuck your ass. Wait, you mean fuck my ass up, right? <laughs> And he fucked up his domain expansion and blew it up. Man, I fell down to my knees when the law came. Yuji seeing an opportunity goes for one last hit to murk this nigga out of existence. But you know, Mahito being an Orochimaru clone, he, he just slithers away into a fucking drain and runs away. Our next jumping, actually, before I even get to our next jumping, there is one beat down that I have to, I have to talk about. Toto beating the shit out of Megumi for no reason. This nigga Toto showed up and was like, hey, listen, homeboy. What kind of women do you like? And by the way, depending on your answer, 
I will beat your ass half to death. Megumi ass was confused as fuck. He's like, what the hell? That makes no sense. Why would you do that? And he's like, bro, just tell me what kind of women do you like? Megumi thinks a little and he's like, I mean, if she got a good personality, I don't see a problem. And then this motherfucker starts crying. And it's like, damn, Fushiguro. Your taste is trash! This nigga went on Fushiguro. to give Fushiguro the worst beating of his life for not liking the same women as him. This nigga Toto is really something else. But that was just the appetizer to the main course meal, that is Hanami getting boxed up with the boogie woogie. Now before this fight, Toto and Itadori actually got into a little squabble themselves. And Toto asked him the same question he asked Megumi. Hey bro, what kind of women is your type? And this nigga answers. Not gonna lie to you bro, if she's tall and got a wagon that moves like jello bro, I'm gay! And Toto started crying and was like, <laughs> I finally found a best friend, bro. You're my brother now. And with that out of the way, these two gave Hanami a beating she will never forget. And yes, that's a she. Hanami showed up to the high school and started boxing everyone. There was nothing they could do about her. And then Maki showed up with her cursed tools. And you know, they, they actually started giving her the works. I'm not gonna lie. But in the middle of giving her the works, Fushiguro got got. Oh no, my God, you got got, bro. Next thing you know, he had these stupid plants growing out of him. And Hanami explained that the more techniques he tried to use, the deeper the roots are gonna go. And then unfortunately, Maki got caught. And then Fushiguro started getting desperate. He was like, oh hell no, bro. I'm not gonna be the first person to go down, you know what? And he was about to use the cursed technique. But Maki yelled at him and was like, nah, bro. Our job here is done. And then the menace brothers showed up. Itadori and Toto finally got to the fight. And then Fushiguro had ass gonna say this. You die again and I'll kill you myself. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? What? Bro, go sit down somewhere, bro. Now the real fight starts, right? And Itadori kicks the fuck out of her. And she's like, damn, that nigga fast. But I could keep up with him. Now as they continue fighting, Itadori goes and try to use a black flash. And fail. So Toto showed up and smacks the fuck out of him. Like, bro, what the that fuck you doing? And then Toto starts giving this man a pep talk and friend. mentions a honeymoon for some reason. I don't know why. But after the pep talk, Itadori was actually able to land a black flash. A real one. After getting smacked by the black flash, Honami was like, you know what? I should take you niggas seriously. And releases her other hand. And then they start throwing hands, but they was going dummy in that fight, bro. And Hanami was thinking, hey, yo, if they continue like this, they might actually be able to damage me. And this bitch removed the plants from under their feet. After landing on their asses, but they, they just continue going at it like nothing happened and then this bitch Hanami starts having an orgasm talking about some Mahito I'm finally getting a good fight like bro what are you talking bro calm down it's just a fight but as they're fighting she throws this man Toto and he was about to get impaled but then he clapped her shit nah I'm just joking he clapped and switched positions with her and Yuji was flabbergasted like hey yo what the fuck and then we get to the boogie woogie beat down they started jumping Hanami and wasn't giving her a chance to do anything Toto was clapping and switching positions with Yuji all over the place. She didn't know who was coming to hit her or who's gonna teleport. She was just getting smacked. While she's sitting there getting the paws put on her by this boogie woogie, this man starts styling on her. Bro, this nigga was literally striking poses as he clapped. I knew characters could get disrespectful in anime, but bro, this is another level. To be styling on your opponent as you guys are jumping her and striking poses for the gram. That is wild. Like, bro, it didn't matter what she did, but she was just getting box and this right here ladies and gentlemen this is the face you make when you are getting your ass thoroughly jumped i hate when i'm watching shonen bro and the main character will be getting pieced up by the villain right and the side characters are just sitting there giving reactions instead of helping like damn there's seven of y'all standing there go jump this nigga bro like stop standing around looking jujutsu kaisen saw that trope and was like nah we not doing that nigga you getting jumped you come on our turf and try to do some shit bro you getting your ass pieced up by everyone they have no qualms about jumping your ass but after that toto switched itadori with the cursed tools that was left in the previous fight and hanami got some quick ptsd from when maki was piecing her up with the tool so she goes to open a domain expansion but you know the light-skinned god himself gojo was not about to let that slide he breaks the barrier that was trying to keep him out and showed his beautiful ass eyes <laughs> Who getting rizzed up first? He teleports to the weird butcher dude and turn his limbs into Twizzlers by just looking at him. And then this nigga uses hollow purple and just ends the whole fight. So yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen honestly has some of the best jumpings in anime. Cause these sorcerers give no fucks, bro. They're gonna jump you. And honest to God, I cannot wait to see who gets the next jumping in JJK. All right, so my JJK jumpings video is well on its way to reaching 500,000 views. 
Thank you guys very much for supporting. I never thought I'd be reaching that many views. But in the comments of that video, a lot of you were like, oh my god, where's Miguel versus Gojo? Where's Gojo beating up Miguel? Uh, Miguel versus Gojo is not a jumping. It was just a one-sided beatdown. That's why I didn't put it in the JJK jumping video. But you guys in the comments really wanted me to talk about this fight. So you guys asked and you shall receive. Today we're going to be talking about how Gojo completely violated Miguel. So we start this with Miguel saying he's gonna take on the one with the blindfold referring to Gojo and the girl is like oh, hey bro one last reminder and Miguel is like yeah yeah I know we're just supposed to be stalling this nigga Miguel pulls up trying to be a fake ass light skin and is like hola my friend let me introduce myself my name is Miguel and I'll be your opponent and Gojo always the one to show off his eyes is like listen here nigga I'm in a hurry while Gojo's trying to show off his beautiful eyes this where the wild things are cast member wannabe started coming around the corner looking like a giant piece of shit Gojo don't even look at this nigga and is like hey bro you're in the way and one shot him after the smoke clears miguel is on his ass the girls ask miguel what the fuck he's doing here and he's like bitch what it look like bro i'm getting my ass beat but gojo not wanting to give this nigga not even a moment of rest is standing behind him like you're a tenacious one and then miguel starts thinking to himself i got like 12 minutes before this perk runs out bro like i need to make this nigga pack and then he lunges at gojo and attacks this man but gojo being the riz god he just flicks it away after swatting away the rope right gojo's like hey yo bro something's wrong with that fucking rope it has an unusual curse on it it keeps this Disrupting my fucking techniques and before I even continue with this fight, bro Somebody needs to be fired because there is no way you make a black character and decided mm, Yeah, bro This nigga needs to use a whip as a, as a weapon and then have said nigga with the whip get styled on by Gojo Without even trying and I don't care if he calls that shit a rope, bro That's a whip. I swear bro that it has to be racist but moving on Miguel starts thinking damn So this is the power of limitless that ghetto told me about huh and then he starts blazing the rope Tell me my friend how many decades do you think it took the people in my country to make this room? And Gojo's like, I don't give a fuck. Miguel. So Miguel got offended and decided to throw a fucking AC unit at this nigga. But that shit just exploded on impact because again, Gojo Stupid. has limitless. And then they start boxing. But I don't know how much of this was boxing because Gojo was just beating on this man. Giving this nigga combos back to back. And then Miguel finally starts fighting back, but you know, that wasn't doing much. Gojo was literally hitting him with the footworks, bro. This nigga was dancing. Like, bro, look at his moves. Look at the turns. But yeah, they keep fighting and this nigga Miguel decided to cosplay Spider-Man for a quick second and tried to run away but nah gojo teleported right in front of his ass and grabbed him by the throat and threw this nigga to the floor hey, like no he was tom way, brady on some shit while miguel was no on the floor rolling gojo goes to attack but then this big ass cursed spirit decided to show up and threw a punch but gojo you know he, he teleports out of the way after that nigga missed he started sliding down the building and then gojo came back with a vengeance to punch this nigga miguel this man miguel was so flabbergasted he was like wow after he falls on the floor miguel starts running like damn nigga i gotta get out of here and tries to be spider-man again but gojo <laughs> Gojo ain't let that shit slide. Gojo came in and slapped this man with a three-piece combo and sent this nigga to next Tuesday with that shit. After he goes flying, Gojo continues to run after this nigga. Like, oh hell no, cuz, you're not escaping this beating. And then he proceeds to give this nigga the most disrespectful hand-to-hand -hand two-piece anybody has ever seen. This nigga literally turned into Eat Man. Like, bro, look at Gojo's eyes as he's piecing Miguel up. Like, bro, this man has the fury of a thousand suns in his eyes right now, and he's like, I'm ready to pack this nigga up. Like, bruh. After the last punch, bro, he's still not giving this nigga no break. He's continuing to go and attack him. Miguel turns some power lines into some snakes. But Gojo just ran through them shits like they were nothing. After Gojo stops running, he turns around. And, hey, hey, yo, was that... Is that the niggas from Space Jam? Now that's a real life plot twist if I've ever seen one, bro. Them niggas had a career change. But we switch back to Miguel and he's like, damn, I got 10 more minutes of this perk left. Time to give it all I got. And if I die tonight, I'm cursing you, ghetto. So yeah, bro, Miguel got one of the worst violations in anime ever in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I was gonna end the video here, right? But I know how my viewers are and I know you guys are gonna be in the comments talking about, oh my God, where's, where, where's Gojo versus Jogo? You gotta watch that fight. So I'm including this in the video as a bonus. Anywho, we start this with Gojo in the car. He leans to the window and he's like, hey bro, stop the car. And he's like, all right, bro, you going ahead. After the car leaves, this random ass nigga came straight from the top rope screaming, yee -haw! 
Like, bitch, who the fuck are you? Rey Mysterio? Like, what the fuck? But he lands and make a fucking crater. And Gojo's like, who the fuck are you? But that nigga wasn't with that talking shit and just blast Gojo. And then here he goes. Oh my, that was easier than expected. And Gojo's like, and who the fuck are you calling easy, nigga? And showed that the attack didn't do anything to him. And Gojo starts thinking, damn, this nigga's a cursed spirit that can talk. And he's probably stronger than Sukuna is currently. And then Gojo starts cracking his knuckles. <laughs> I'm about to violate this nigga. Jogo's like, oh, so you think this is gonna be fun, huh? And attacks his ass with some flies. But th them shits did nothing to Gojo. Cause you know, he's Gojo. But then as he's standing there after he blocks it, he realized, oh shit, there's more to these things. And them niggas blew up. And he's like, damn, a two-stage attack with insects and then an explosion, huh? But Jogo came out of nowhere, looking like a fake-ass firebender and hits Gojo with an attack that replaces his head with fire. And then he goes behind Gojo and he's like, I'm about to blow this nigga's back out. This nigga just hit a two-piece combo on Gojo, bro. And then he starts bragging. Well, that human was just as fragile as the rest. And then he starts walking off. I'm going home to take a fat-ass dookie. But then Gojo says, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? And Jogo turns around and is like, what in the devil is going on? And Gojo goes to explain. He's like, bro, what you actually touched was the infinity between me and you, you dumb ass. Put your hand out. Jogo is looking skeptical. But then Gojo's like, <laughs> come on, don't be shy. And he goes to touch Gojo's hands. And it's like, wait, why can't I touch this nigga? And Gojo's like, yeah, buddy, the closer you get... The slower you go. And then Gojo starts acting like a fucking light skin. <laughs> so what now? We could hold hands. <laughs> oh, don't be shy now. Hey, yo, what the fuck, nigga? I ain't with that zesty shit. Gojo gut checks this nigga because he got offended. And he just keeps palming this nigga while still holding his hands. So this nigga can't run away. And then he finished this nigga off with a kick. As that nigga went flying, Gojo's like, ha ha, nigga, I'm about to spread your cheek. And fires a red ball at him. This nigga Jogo starts running all over the place like a fucking Looney Tune character. And even thought he was a ninja running up the fucking trees. But Gojo caught his dumb ass before he got away. And look at how this nigga's grabbing his face bruh like bruh five finger contact like shigaraki type shit bruh jogo goes for an attack but gojo dodged it until bro that's so fucking annoying why is one named jogo and the other named gojo anywho gojo teleports behind this nigga did his best blue lock impression and kicks this nigga down into the fucking lake hey bro why this nigga looking like kisame right now <laughs> Jogo gets up, and he's like, No matter, if I can't hit him, I'll drag him into my domain expansion. After Gojo had kicked him, he was like, Oh shit, this is perfect. Gojo comes back and is like, uh, sorry about that, my guy. And Yuji's just fucking flabbergasted. And then he's like, hey, this is Yuji Itadori. Uh, he's here to watch. Don't mind him. Just keep fighting. And by the way, it'll be fine after all. <laughs> You're weak as fuck. And this man, Volcano Head, got heated. And Yuji's like, yo, this nigga's head built like Mount Fuji. And um, not to be patronizing Yuji, but he looks more like Volcano Head Squidward. I don't know what you're talking about. But this nigga was mad. And he opens up his fucking domain expansion. He's like, I'm about to cook you niggas alive. He took their ass to Volcano Land. He calls it Coffin of the Iron Mountain. But, but I think Volcano Land is much better. And Gojo's like, this right here is a domain expansion. And the best way to deal with the domain expansion is to lay out your own domain. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where we see Gojo's beautiful eyes. And he opens up Infinite Void. This nigga Jogo was literally flabbergasted. There was, he was just astonished. For those of you who knows what Infinite Void does, that's great. But Gojo pulls up and grabs this nigga's head like he was palming a fucking basketball. And it's like, this is the inner world of Limitless. And it's like, it's a bit ironic, isn't it? You're granted everything, but you can't do anything. And then he just pulls this nigga's head off his body. So then he starts stepping on this nigga's head and asking questions. Like, damn homeboy, who the fuck sent you after me? And what's supposed to happen if you had actually killed me? Jogo's like, nigga, I ain't telling you shit. But Gojo's like, if you don't tell me, I'm gonna exercise you. And that's when Hanami shows up. He took this nigga's head and ran away. Uh, I made a mistake in a JJK jumping video and called Hanami a she. Guys, Hanami is a, is a, is a male, apparently. Anywho, after Hanami leaves, Gojo says this. I got away. He's way more impressive than Volcano Head. <laughs> so yeah, bro, Gojo's one of the most disrespectful niggas in anime. And is offering the two-piece to anyone who decides to get in his way. Alright, but look, so about a week ago, I decided to upload JJK Jumping's Part 2. And five hours later, yeah, it got copyrighted. So I went back and edited as much as I can to make sure it can't be copyrighted again. I uploaded it, and it was doing fine. 72k views in five days later. Oh, 
Oh my God, bro, they copyrighted it again. And thanks to this commenter right here, I decided, you know what, let me go back all the way back to the drawing board and redo this all over again. Now, the previous video will be up on my Patreon if you want to go and watch that one. It's also another way you could support the channel or you could get the merch, which, you know, support me too. Anywho, Jujutsu Kaisen set itself apart by having everybody getting jumped in that show. If you want to see people getting jumped on a regular basis, Bro, go watch Jujutsu Kaisen. Like, I, I know my like first video actually uh, uh, encouraged a couple of you guys to go check the show out. And I also want to do the same thing with this video. So yeah, go watch Jujutsu Kaisen if you want to see some niggas get jumped. Anywho, Jujutsu Kaisen came back with an absolute vengeance when it comes to people getting jumped. And this video will include Toji running everyone's pockets. So I don't have a million of you saying, Oh my god, JP, what? You, why aren't you talking about Toji versus Gojo? <laughs> or Toji versus Gato? Bro, it's gonna include the, the, it's in the video. Calm down. Anywho, we start this off with Gojo taking a back shot. Everyone is flabbergasted. Like, what the fuck just happened? Gojo turns around and is like, have we met before? And Toji's like, I What's cannot going, help you with that, my boy. I do not even know the name of my own son. But it's even worse, especially since you were light-skinned. Anywho, they both attack him and send his ass flying. Gojo tells Gero to take his parachute pants wearing ass and Amonai and go to Tengen. So they could complete the ritual while he takes care of Toji. Toji burst out of the cursed spirit that attacked him. I swear, this nigga thinks he's Rita Repulsa or some shit the way he comes out of that thing, bro. Like, <laughs> take your ass back in there, bruh. And bro, look at the look on his face, bro. This, this is the mark of a true menace. Anywho, Gojo's looking at him and he's like, hey, yeah, yo, what the fuck is that on your show? Is that Grimace? Yo, they really got Grimace and JJK, ain't no way, bruh. Anywho, Toji's like, hey, where's the Star Plasma vessel, bruh? You, you know, I low-key wanted to take you out with that last attack, but I <laughs> guess I'm getting a bit rusty. Gojo, in all his great wisdom, is like, the bounty on Ammonite was taken down already, you dumb ass. No shit, Sherlock. I was the one who took it down, you Kakashi wannabe. Huh? Don't worry, it'll make sense in a couple of episodes. Either way, Gojo did not like being called a wannabe of any kind and launches a boulder at him. But Toji slashes that bitch with speed and precision. And Gojo's like, bro, something's off about this nigga. Hey, yo, those are Johnny Test Smarty Pants, you fucking thief! So you're telling me this nigga went and stole Grimace and Johnny Test Smarty Pants, bro? We need to put this man down, bro. What the fuck? And before I even move on, bro, you see how he slid that sword in the thing's mouth? Like, he's used to this, bro. You weird. Like, bro, what else you be sliding in there like that? Oh, <laughs> you, hey. Bro, yeah, we need to stop bitch. this man. <laughs> Anywho, Toji starts bouncing around like he was on crack. And then he finally goes in for an attack, but Gojo saw it coming and sent his ass flying through several buildings. And, bro, he's smiling as he got hit. On oh, God, bro, we need to arrest this man. What the fuck is wrong with him? Anywho, after he lands, Gojo walks up being a pompous asshat and is like is that Chris too your precious trump card <laughs> cuz that shit is ass but then he quickly realizes that Toji's not even there bro he's talking to himself and stupid bro, why, why is he <laughs> why is Gojo built like this nigga <laughs> yo the animators did you dirty by putting you in this pose <laughs> Toji starts sniffing crack again and bouncing around and Gojo's getting concerned at this point and he's like bro maybe I should try and find that cursed spirit that is around his neck but when he realizes that's too much of a fucking hassle and Toji's too fast he comes to the conclusion yeah let me just destroy everything around me he won't have anywhere to hide after he's done he's like yeah, there's nowhere to hide nigga you have no cover but then this giant swarm of fly heads come and surround Gojo he's like yo was he keeping those up his ass or something where the fuck did these come from Gojo's like hey wait a minute he's trying to use a blind spot should I use blue again but then he realizes hey yo wait a minute this nigga's going after Amonai and bro the moment he turns around Toji comes in this was the most horrendous mistake that Gojo could have made by the time Gojo realizes his mistake Toji stabs him in the neck. By the way, this is called the Heavenly Spear, the one weapon that can actually bypass Gojo's infinity. Anywho, Gojo goes to grab it, but Toji slices it down and stabs him a couple more times for good measure. Gojo goes to do a final attack, but Toji does the meanest sidestep ever and stabs him in the forehead. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was the end of Satoru Gojo. Damn! Toji stands up, grins like the menace he is, and is like, oh yeah definitely getting my edge back. Now, Toji did not stop at killing Gojo, bro. We pan to Amonai and Ghetto. He's telling Amonai that, hey, bro, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, bro. If you refuse, me and Gojo will protect you from Tengen. And as she goes to grab his hands with tears in her eyes. Bruh. Toji comes out of nowhere with a 360 no scope and got her with a headshot. Oh god, bro, we need to lock this menace up, bro. Who does this to a child? 
Eddie, who got all flabbergasted, is like, yo, why are you here? Toji's like, huh? Why? Oh, that's what you mean. <laughs> I'm fresh off smoking that Gojo pack, nigga. Uh, Gato did not like that answer and sends a fucking dragon at his ass. As the dragon got Toji in the air, Gato launches a bunch of projectiles at him. And bro, check out the look on this menace's face, dog. He does, bro, he's having fun. Not gonna lie, bro, Jujutsu Kaisen has some great animation, bro. Just this jumping scene alone, bro, it's so clean. Like, why? I just felt the need to mention that, bro. Anywho, Toji lands, and Gato summons this big ass, what, uh, is that a Cyclops, bro? Where did he get this? Anyways, he's not doing any type of damage to Toji, and Gato is still shooting at him. Toji goes and slices the dragon all the way down the middle, and Gato is just flabbergasted, like, yo, what the fuck? He should not be able to do that, bro. This nigga's hacking. Toji lands in front of him, right? And it's like, mm -mm -mm. you suck, nigga. But then the smiling lady pulls up asking him a question, talking about something she pretty. And uh, she has her own domain. And you can't be violent while you're inside that domain until you answer her question. Toji's like, well, to be honest, bro, you're not my type. You, you kind of ugly. Like, bro, look at your mouth, cuz. Like, bro, how am I supposed to get top from you? She didn't like that answer and tried to cut off his ear. But Toji being the absolute fucking menace that he is, he pulls out the inverted spear of heaven and cuts out of the domain. But turns out, Gero was right behind this nigga. He tries to absorb Grimace into his own armory, but Toji was not up for that and promptly turned this nigga into a Luffy clone. And bro, without even a break, kicks the fuck out this dude, bro. <laughs> and yeah, that's how Toji caught three bodies in one day. Well, two and a half. But it does not even end there. Cause Gojo came back to get his get back. Toji is walking off after getting paid and the sun is pretty bright in his eyes. But as he looks down, it's this nigga Gojo back for revenge. He's like, hey, run me my fate, nigga. For real? For real, real. I'm alive and kicking. <laughs> and you want to run a fade? Yes, nigga. I'm about to spread your cheeks. <laughs> this man okay? He didn't even say pause. The reason you're going to lose is because you didn't chop my head off. <laughs> this nigga tripping. I ain't getting my cheeks spread by nobody. What the f- By the way, I'm robbing you for that 30 million. Huh? Bad is Toji looks up and Gojo's just floating there like some weirdo. Like, bro, what part of the exorcist is this? Wait a minute. Hey, yo, he bumping that new JP. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, hey. Go listen to the music. Or Gojo will float to your house. Anywho, Toji gets up and starts stretching like, damn, bro, I need to go back to Pilates. Not gonna lie. He pulls out a chain and attaches it to the inverted spear of heaven and starts spinning it. And then he starts grinning like a menace as usual. Like, bro, Toji is the definition of somebody who just likes to run fade. Like the type of nigga who will get in fights for no reason, bro. Just, just because he wants to fight. Anywho, Gojo notices him. And Toji He's like, bro, something's off. But he blows it off and launches an attack. Gojo, having awakened his light skin energy at this point, dodges the fuck out of him. And even when he redirects that bitch, he dodges it. Like, bro, Gojo currently is higher than a kite. This nigga is on cloud 50, dog. And then this man starts getting enlightened. And he's like, sorry, Amanai. I'm not even angry about you. I bear no grudge against anyone. It's just that I'm off of perk 90 right now and I'm not trying to come down. And then he finally says the line. Throughout heaven and earth, I alone am the fraudulent one, if you know you know. But Toji don't give a fuck, and he's just mad that Gojo's being a light skin right now. He launches a bunch of rocks at him, but they all just stop when they get near him. And bro, look at Toji, dog. He is so mad right now. So he goes to launch an attack from behind, and then Gojo proceeds to stop time somehow. I, I don't know how he does it. After everything slowed down around him, he uses the hollow purple. And bruh, look at Toji's face. This is the face of a man who regrets the decisions that led up to this. Toji is like, you know what? Usually I would've ran my ass away the moment this nigga came to me awakened. But for some reason I had to run the fucking fade. And now look at me. I'm not even a donut. Yeah. And as we pan out to see what Toji looks like after the attack, he looks like Rolf. If you guys haven't seen Ed, Ed and Eddie, the big picture show, <laughs> Rolf was running around the movie with half of his body bitten off. <laughs> this is literally Toji right now. <laughs> Anywho, Toji goes to pass his hands to feel his left side. But again, there's nothing there. He's like, he's a literal Apple logo. And in his final moments, he remembers his son. So yeah, Gojo actually managed to get his get back. But moving on, we fast forward to the future 
where these three stooges thought it would be a good idea to jump Gojo. I bet you guys didn't think I would include this reverse jumping in there too, huh? Anywho, Volcano Head Jogo, Hanami, and Chozo shows up to jump Gojo. They proceed to block all exits. And Gojo's like, bro, I, I told y'all niggas I wasn't gonna run, bro. I'm running y'all fade. And bro, look at these three stooges right here. Jogo looks like he is way too happy to be here. Like, bro, he already took an L once and decided to come back for more. Anywho, they open the door and people start falling on the train tracks. And bro, pause right here. Tell me that's not Android 18. She is literally dressed as Android 18. <laughs> she just need the blonde hair and she'll be good. Anyways, Hanami and Jogo goes for an attack and on their way, they just start murking humans. And I swear, bro, every time I look at this man, Jogo, I am prompted to laugh. The faces he makes, bro. Anyways, Chozo launches an attack with blood, but as we all expected, it doesn't really do anything to Gojo. But after the attack ends, right, that's when Hanami and Jogo comes in for a punch. And bro, why are they so happy right now, dog? <laughs> Look at their faces, man. Like, bro, this is the face of people that are so mad that they got jumped. <laughs> they finally ready to get their get back, bro. <laughs> It's so happy. Anywho, they punch him, but as usual, they can't get through uh, infinity. Even when they surround their fist with a simple domain. So they amplify the domain. And as Gojo's in the middle, he thinks for a second and just decides to fly up, hoping that they hit each other. Anywho, after Jogo killed somebody, right? Gojo takes his blindfold out and is showing off his beautiful eyes. Gojo's like, hey, you there, the weed. This is the third time we've met and you still decide to underestimate the fuck out of me. So now I am going to fuck you up. And he's like, let the reverse jumping begin. Bring it on. So he walks up to them. Hey, I walk around like that nigga. And both of them go and try to punch him. But he grabs Jogo's arm and bro, <laughs> this whole fight, <laughs> man just toyed with Jogo, bro. <laughs> he pulls off this nigga's arm and blocks Hanami's punch with it. And Hanami's like, bro, he's only targeting Jogo. And so Hanami thinks that Gojo was capping out his ass earlier when he said that he would kill him first. <laughs> Shadowing. Anywho, he tosses Jogo, and bro, this nigga starts running for his life, dog. Hanami decides, you know what? It's a great idea to unleash my technique right now since he's focusing on Jogo. And this is exactly what Gojo was waiting for because now her domain is dismissed. And bro, look at the look on his face. He is ready to run his pockets. Gojo flies right up to him and grab the horns on his face, right? And yoinks them bitches out. Bro, I really hope YouTube doesn't censor me for this or something because bruh. This is just brutal. Anywho, after all that, Gojo goes to attack Jogo. Wait, what? No. Jogo goes to attack Gojo. Oh my fucking God. This is why I didn't like talking about that Gojo versus Jogo fight, because it's annoying to say. Anywho, the punch doesn't land, because <laughs> infinity. While he's still punching, Gojo says this. Bro really called Hanami in a spirit. <laughs> this nigga is disrespectful as fuck. Anywho, Gojo turns towards Hanami and starts working towards him. And using his technique as a fucking force field, since it's so strong, <laughs> starts pushing him into the wall. And on God, bro, Gojo is enjoying himself way too much, bro. You're looking more and more like Toji every day. Like, bro, that Toji fight did something to you. <laughs> and it's not good for Hanami. Anywho, he goes right up to Hanami's face and is just staring at him. While he's doing that, this nigga Jogo tries to threaten him by showing he's gonna cook all the humans there. But uh, Gojo could give less of a fuck and proceeds to murk Hanami. Man, I found out to my knees when the law came. Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> You're next. Jogo starts booking it, bro, because he knows what's gonna happen if Gojo catches him. And yo, look how he got up there! Gojo is on straight demon time with how he didn't he didn't even get the bro. He didn't even jump, bro. He just pulled himself towards it. But even then, he never really caught Jogo. And in the end, uh, we all know what happened. Anyways, bro, I saw the opportunity to have Splash talk about two teenagers beating up an old man, and I went with it. Take it away, Splash. Itadori and Megumi got some insane chemistry when it comes to jumping people, I'm not gonna lie. Actually, matter of fact, Itadori has insane chemistry with anyone when it comes to jumping. If you're in Jujutsu Kaisen and Itadori wants you boomed, you will get boomed. And Jiro witnessed that firsthand. Now, first off, why Jiro look like that? Bro's eyes are mad weird. I don't even know how to explain it, but they are. What's wrong with him? If something isn't already wrong with him, something is definitely wrong with him. After bro gets jumped, there will definitely be something wrong with him. Now, the way Yuji and Megumi snatched him off the top of the building, woo -wee! you can tell by the cadence in which they snatched bro that the jumping was about to be master class. They moved with so much emphasis, you could tell they stand on business. So, you know what I'm saying? They start fighting and shit. And immediately, they started cooking. They were punching bro and kicking bro and running a train on bro hey yo what the fuck they were just doing him bad i'm not gonna lie 
or so we thought. All the hits they were doing to Isaac Netherroad Jr. were not working. And that's cause bro, big easy. And that's cause that's how bro's power works. Basically, the harder you hit bro, the softer it is. And the softer you hit bro, the harder it is. That's so pause. And at first, Megumi and Yuji ain't know that. And I ain't know that either. I was mad confused. Imagine you and your bro are thraxing someone repeatedly and they're just laughing it off and not taking no damage. If I'm gonna keep it a buck, I would have to politely exit the fight. Clearly, the perks hidden too hard. He going crazy. Not gonna lie, he got it. But it ended up being all good because Megumi eventually found out his power. So then they blitz bro in sync. Not gonna lie, it was so beautiful, bruh. They hit him with the frog, you know what I'm saying? Because frogs are weak and don't do nothing for real. But they both started jumping, bro. And see, now they were doing him bad. Bro was just getting cooked out there. Weird mustache having an anime. Then Itadori hit him with the actual punch and he got sent flying. Woo the jumping was so tough, I had a voice crack. Not gonna lie, I don't think Jiro knew what planet he was on after that hit, but you know what I'm saying? That's expected. He did just so happen to be a victim of a JJK jumping. Do your very best to avoid being a victim of a JJK jumping. Sorry, Splash, but there's no such thing as avoiding a JJK jumping, bro. Because if you're a cursed spirit, especially a strong one bro you're gonna get jumped there's like a 99.99999 percent chance you will get jumped and i'm all here for it all right so i've talked about jumpings in jujutsu kaisen and how they revolutionized the idea instead of having the background standing there watching you know they all jump the, the the villain but i haven't spoken about the opposite of that when a couple of characters go to jump somebody and fail miserably today we're gonna be looking at some fights and how to not jump somebody and the first fight we're gonna be looking at is killer b bodies team time all right so first of all killer b was coming out of his house spitting bars killer b i know i'm the shit might pull up and fuck on your bitch i'm getting to the money i'm hey yo what the fuck hey where y'all niggas come from hey bro you're the eight tails jinchuriki right nigga it's lord eight tails jinchuriki to you whatever nigga we can here to pack you up jugo take the left Karin, get behind me. So he gets who launches the first attack and created a big ass dust cloud. Everybody waiting to see what happened. And this nigga Killer B blocked it. He flips the sword, put it on his neck, right? Started styling on them while rapping. <laughs> bro, this nigga Killer B is something else, bro. Jugo starts attacking him, and then we flip to Sasuke. Sasuke standing there like, hey, yo, is this nigga really rapping while he fighting us? And we flip back to the fight, and he had Jugo like this. <laughs> that nigga was doing the stinky leg. Had his ass twitching, bro. And he was still rapping. Damn, you niggas are ass. Pull up over here, try to jump, and I'm about to make all you niggas eat the grass. Karin is still flabbergasted that this nigga spitting such fire. And so he guess who's just jealous that he ain't got no bars. While they standing there staring at him, he tosses Jugo's body at him. And Sasuke ass thinking he the shit. He's like, all right, whatever, I'll go. And Killer B's like, hey, who the fuck are you? And Sasuke's like, bro, we don't owe you an explanation, bro. We just came here to make you a pack. And so he gets who's still in the back hating because he can't spit no bars. So they start the fight, and both of them turn into Beyblades for some reason. Sasuke stops the sword swing and kicks this nigga in the face. Killer B stops for a second and pulls out his notepad. Mind you, this nigga didn't even acknowledge the fact that he got kicked in the face. And here we go. Bags, bags, bags. I walk in the store, little bitch, I'm not looking at tags. I got that drip and you niggas got rags. Okay, yeah, yo, that shit fine. Sasuke standing there flabbergasted like, did this nigga just start mid-fight? and pull out a notebook to write bars? And so he gets, who gets even more yeah. jealous that he can't spit no bars. And then B pulls out his seven sword style. And he like, watch out little nigga, I'm about to style on you. He turns into a Beyblade, again for some reason, and starts piecing Sasuke shit up. He had that nigga on the run, bro. He was on the ropes, there was nothing he could do. And then Sasuke got packed. And Sasuke was like, no, I'm tired of this shit, bro. And he starts using a Chidori. He charges at B. And B blocks that shit. And here goes B spitting again. Float like a butterfly. Stings like a bee and packs that nigga up. And B was about to end it right there, bro. But Sweet Guess who came for the save. And B was still cutting through the sword. After Jugo does a huge attack, here comes Plot Armory coming to save Sasuke. After Sasuke hit the revive, they decided to actually jump him this time. I don't know why they didn't do that before, but okay. But they actually started giving B the works. I mean, he was still holding his own, but you know. B escapes, right? And this nigga's still rapping. I'm done playing. I'm about to pack these niggas up. Then go home and fill up my cup. Yeah. But Karin being an Uzumaki spots his ass. And he was like, damn. All right, whatever. Let's take it to the next level. He uses his chakra cloak. And comes out Sasuke with the Lariat. Sasuke was like, oh, hell no, nigga. I'm going to die if this man hits me. He uses his Mangekyo Sharingan to put him in a Genjutsu. And B falls to the floor. Everybody sighs. And then out of nowhere, this nigga gets smacked with the Lariat. <laughs> 
<laughs> he thought he escaped, but nah, B came back for round two. He crushed that nigga's throat. Sasuke was like, <gasps> but you know, Sasuke got you know walking plot armor with them, and they 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 saved them. But B was like, you know what? I'm just gonna end this shit right now, bro. He he transforms into Giyuki. Oh my god. So he gets to gets him to the water and tried to fight him. But Yuki packed him up with a tail of beast bomb. And they turned his bro, what is that? Oh my god, bro. That nigga turned his ass into a slide. At this point, Team Taka was like, hey yo, what the fuck are we gonna do, bro? This nigga about to pack our shit up. While they having their little moment, B is still in the back being a crackhead. Right as he's about to pack their shit up for real. Here comes Sasuke with the Madarasu. And they're all like, damn, this shit's finally over. But one of the tentacles that was on fire falls on Karin. Oh my god, bro. These niggas cannot stop catching L. So Sasuke had to use his mangeku again to turn off the fucking flames. And his eyes start bleeding even more. And they take B to go with them. But that wasn't even actually B. It was a tentacle clone that they got. So yeah, Killer B made a fucking joke of Team Taka. To be honest, bro, I'm looking at this shit and I'm four minutes in. And this is the first fight. Oh my god, bro. I was gonna put a whole lot more reverse jumpings in here. But I might have to make a part two, bro. I don't want to make this video. Too long. Anywho, the next reverse jumping we're gonna get into is Miriam Leona disrespecting five elves. Alright, so at the beginning of this arc, the elves got reincarnated. And these elves are fucking strong, especially depending on the body they are reincarnated into. If they reincarnate into just a normal mage, that mage is gonna become pretty strong. Strong enough to take a couple other mages by himself. But if they reincarnate into a captain, now it takes about a whole squad to try and fight this one nigga. And she stood her ground against five of them. Raya alone was already a problem. But then four more elves showed up, including this broken ass nigga with a uh, paint magic. Now before the fight started, everybody was talking trash. Raya was like, damn, you stayed behind behind to stall some time just so we couldn't get Asta but we're still gonna get him and then she responded stall time oh hell nah nigga they were just getting in the way I plan on killing every single one of you here the elves are standing there like is this lady right in the head like what the, the fuck is wrong with you and then she says five against one you still needed a handicap that is wild bro she's facing five of the strongest niggas around and she, she's just telling them they need more of a handicap bro now the fight started and the big bitch gave everybody wings for some reason it, she has wing magic like like that just sounds so stupid but okay i guess it makes everybody fast the nigga with paint magic makes a giant hand to punch her and as she's about to go and block it raya uses teleportation magic to catch her ass off guard and she gets hit and that's when she starts thinking hey bro i should have been able to dodge that what the hell's going on that's when one of the elves start talking and she's like yeah bitch I, i'm using snow magic to dull your senses which loki sounds stupid i don't know how snow magic is gonna dull your senses but okay as the fight went on one of them actually ended up catching her and trapping her in his magic and then they all stood there like yup it's finally over okay we, we got rid of her but nah she breaks out of it and she was like you know what since you were in the crimson lion squad i'm going to have to kill you with my own bare hand and she lunges at that nigga to kill her as she's approaching the elf and the dude's body start getting confused he's like hey yo why is this body getting terrified of her but right when she's about to murk her Ryo comes out of nowhere and slashes her and then the wing lady attacks her with another barrage and here goes this nigga raya farewell madam royal but as soon as he says that he gets attacked now the elves are flabbergasted like what the how did that not kill her and she keeps going she's like hey bro i thought y'all was here to kill humans it seems like you guys missed one and powers up even more at this point the elves are just confused like bro why is this human not dying first of all and she keeps talking trash so they keep fighting and she's getting bodied not gonna lie bro the elves were piecing her up and after one last smack from the giant hand right they're like okay this shit's finally over but nah nigga she's still getting up and raya's like oh ain't no way bro what how, how are you still getting up after we just beat your ass like that but she responds with this She really said she's not gonna die until she kills every single one of them. But Raya was like, look, bro, just stop, dude. This is over. And then she goes, oh, yeah, it's over, all right. After I use my strongest attack, all of you niggas gonna die. And she opens up her monozone and unleashes this devastating ass attack. Afterwards, the elves were flabbergasted. They're like, bro, there's no fucking way, bro. One of them even used her magic to try and defend them, but they still got smacked by it. I mean, they were still alive, but <laughs> not in good shape. And even though she was out of mana, she she was still standing on her feet ready to fight them and the elves were really over it at this point bro so they decided to combine all their magic together to do one final attack and get rid of her for good but then asta and rosa zoro 
Wait, Liz, I don't I don't remember this nigga's name for real. All right, I just checked, and his name's Zora. But yeah, he came and absorbed the attack into a spell that doubles its power. And then he fires it at Asta. Raya's like, hey, yo, did he just fire that shit at his own comrade? But Asta smacks that bitch like he was trying out for some Major League Baseball and doubles its power again. But the elves really didn't know this. But after Zora tried to absorb the attack again, his spell starts cracking. He's like, damn, I can't hold this much power. And Asta comes again and smacks the fuck out of it, which I think just increased its power. Six and blast that shit at the L. It was definitely over after they got smacked by that shit. After that, them niggas took Nero Leona and ran away. Because they were not staying to find out if that shit actually worked or not. There are a lot of anime women that I like, but hey, Nero Leona's in the top 10 easy. Now, before I get to Madara disrespecting the Shinobi Alliance in the Five Kage, I have a bonus reverse jumping from a little show known as Fairy Tail. Now, this was not Su and Gajil versus the, the Twin Dragon. Sting and Rogue. Now, keep in mind that this was supposed to be a two-on-two. -two. Now, before the fight started, bro, them niggas was talking mad trash! <laughs> Listen here, you nigglets. First of all, you guys are just first generation dragons. We are third generation. We're better. We was trained by dragons, and we got dragon lacrimas inside of us. You niggas got nothing on us. After the first round of fighting, Natsu and Gajio kind of beat their ass. Natsu was like, hey, bro, did you guys actually defeat y'all dragons? You know, you're kind of trash. And here goes Sting. Defeat? <laughs> I killed that nigga with my bare hand. And Natsu was like, hey, bro, wasn't that like y'all parents, though? Nigga, that's none of your business. Now, they get back to fighting, and the, the twin dragons were getting pieced up. After all that fucking trash talking, they were getting their ass beat. I'm not going to go too in-depth with the fight. I'm going to do that when I talk about the failed trash talking video. But the fight kept going back and forth. You know, at one point Natsu and Gajiel are beating their ass. Next thing you know the twin dragons go into their dragon drive and start beating Natsu's ass. And then Natsu and Gajiel goes back to beating their ass in their dragon drive so they go even stronger. Now they release their dragon force. Everybody that knows what dragon force is is shocked that they're able to do it by themselves. And then them niggas started toying with Gajiel and Natsu and beating their ass. But as they were fighting, the fighting was so strong, it destroyed the fucking arena and they fell through the ground. But the fight continued and Sting and Rogue was just beating their ass until they were on the floor and everybody was worried about it. They even thought them niggas was dead but nah Natsu gets up and starts talking and he's like hey bro I done learned everything I can about you niggas now I know how your attack goes when you defend and even what position your foot faces when you're about to attack and he's like it's around 11 o'clock but Gajil's like nah nigga it's 10 and they start arguing in the middle of arguing Natsu pushes this nigga into a rail car and make it go off. Now, mind you, Dragon Slayers have terrible motion sickness, so Gajiu's not getting out of this anytime soon. No. And then he turns around and is like, all right, I gotta pay you niggas back. Y'all was looking down on me? Now I'm gonna style on you niggas. Bring it on. And he actually starts beating their ass. This was a two-on-two, -two, and Natsu turned it into a reverse jumping. This nigga Natsu was giving them the ones back to back, and they could do nothing, even though they were in their Dragon Force. Bro, he was beating them so bad, that their cats was crying. Oh my God, bro. What kind of savage do you have to be to do that? But as the fight goes on, Sting and Rogue were like, okay, you know what? We're just gonna use our strongest attack and finish you off. And they started using their unison rate. Now, as they're using this unison rate, bro, the, the announcers, they're hyping that shit up, bro. They're like, oh man, this is the strongest attack you could possibly attain as a fucking mage. Looks like a unison rate. It's what you might call fusion magic. It's generally considered to be such an advanced technique that you could spend your entire life training and never master it. They really said you could train your whole life and never master this. But then they launched that bitch at Natsu. And Natsu with a single attack overpowers Bruh. their fucking unison rate. So yeah, Natsu's kind of a menace. But now that we're done with this little detour, we finally go to Madara disrespecting the Shinobi Alliance and the Five Kage in a reverse jumping. Madara stands there, look at about... 3,000 niggas ready to piece him up. And he jumps down and started running towards them. No hesitation whatsoever, bro. This man gets into the crowd and people start flying like helicopters, bro. And he's doing all this with just taijutsu. Like, bro, could you imagine how strong of a human you have to be to punch somebody, like, in the air that high? And back to back with multiple niggas. And this nigga's eyes are moving with his Sharingan. And this is Loki, my favorite scene in Naruto, bro. Because it truly shows what a Sharingan user would be like during a fucking fight like this. It really shows shows how much they can perceive in a matter of seconds. He grabs a random sword and starts slicing and dicing. And this one nigga gonna throw a kunai with a bomb attached to it. He rips the paper bomb off, sticks it to a random dude, and throws the kunai right back to the dude. Turned around, kicked the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> he really kicked this man to his comrade so he could blow up. Bro, oh god, Madara is something else, bro. Bro, he's sitting there piecing niggas up, and then some random dude tried to come from underground. This nigga jumps, channels his inner Gene Claude Van Damme, and kicks two other random niggas. And then stomps on this nigga's head! 
It's like every single one of this nigga's actions are just calculated. Well, I mean, when you have the shine gun, you, you have the time to do that. But, bro, he's fighting, and then he just grabs this random nigga and starts strangling him with one hand. And he's like, damn, nigga, you want to dance too? Bet that out. And then here comes Tamari with her big ass fan. And then she says this. Do not underestimate me. <laughs> nigga, Madara don't even know you exist. The fuck are you talking about underestimate, bro? Madara uses one fire style, and it is the biggest out of the whole series we've ever seen. It takes like seven niggas using water style to try and stop it. And that barely did anything, because fireballs was still raining. It was dusty as fuck, but that, that wasn't stopping Madara not one bit. Bro, this nigga's fighting a whole army by himself. Gara, Onoki, and Naruto doesn't attack, and they thought they had him, but nah. This nigga busts out his Susano. Pulls out four chakra blades and started making waves with bodies. Gara manages to pull this nigga out of his Susano. And Naruto uses a Rasen Shuriken to try and kill him. But shit, this nigga pulls out his Rinnegan and stops it. And everybody was just flabbergasted like, ain't no way this nigga has a Rinnegan. Bro pulls out his Susanoo again. And this is when he disrespects, you know, everybody in the fucking show. He does a hand seal. And everybody who is looking up is like, Yo, we lost this. Who decided it was a good idea to fight this nigga? Look at this dude's face, bro. He's just ready to go home to his wife and kids. Madara pulls a fucking meteor towards them. But you know, we all know what happens next. Onoki and Gara does their hardest and manages to stop the meteor. And every shinobi in the alliance fell to the floor in relief like, oh my god, I can finally go back to my wife. And Madara's like, oh hell no nigga, you're not going back to your wife. What are you gonna do about the second one, Onoki? And yeah, it just devastates the whole shinobi alliance. After that, all five Kage decided to show up. So that is like, hey, bro, I need to heal these two. Can you guys buy me some time? Mai starts spitting her nasty ass mucus, and the third Raikage was just going dummy with his lightning style. And was surprised at how fast this nigga Madara was. After hitting Madara, Gara uses a Grand Sand Mausoleum to try and, you know, seal his Susanoo. But he busts out of that shit. After that, Mai uses some steam to try and cover the battlefield. Which makes no sense to me, Stupid. since this nigga has a Rinnegan, bro. He can see. As the mist spread, what a tongue twister. The Raikage teleports to move and sends this nigga flying. <laughs> <laughs> he turned this nigga into Team Rock. Nigga, but after that, he goes to Madara since Anoki's on his back, making him heavier and lighter whenever he needs. And punches this nigga Susano. And Madara's flabbergasted because, yo, this nigga's breaking my Susano. After buying themselves a couple of seconds, so now they went to give the Naruto clone a little pep talk and a message to take back to Naruto. <laughs> They really think they're going to win, bro. But the fight continues since, you know, they got their little morale boost. But it didn't matter what they do, bro. Madara was just too strong. And then he uses a wood style attack. And Tsunade is like, hey, wait a minute. It's not my grandpa's attack. While she's telling everybody not to inhale the fucking pollen from the flowers, this motherfucker pulls up out of nowhere with his Susano again. Bro, how does he keep doing that? That thing is huge and loud. But yeah, he's like, hey, bro, don't get too distracted by the flowers because I'm about to whoop y'all ass. And then he uses a fire style to burn the wood. And since one, it's hot as fuck and two, there's a plant giving the pollen to make them fall asleep. They all fell unconscious, except for Anoki. This old man's getting up still and uses his particle style to cut a fucking hole in the plant, which allowed them to breathe again. After waking up, bro, Madara shows them what's on his chest. And it's Hashirama's face. And everybody's flabbergasted, like, ain't no way, bro. That's the first Hokage. How is that face on his chest? And he's like, hell yeah, nigga, y'all can feel it, right? <laughs> I know you can feel it, Tsunade, bro. His blood runs through your veins. I have Hashirama's powers running through me. And through this whole fight, bro, this nigga Madara just keeps glazing Hashirama. Every single chance he get, man, y'all niggas can't do better than Hashirama. Man, Hashirama's attack would've hurt me a whole lot more than your bullshit. Like, damn, bro, get off his dick! He's dead! But he's like, Tsunade, your jutsus are garbage. Your jutsus don't even compare to Hashirama's. You're just a weak woman. Hey, look, Madara, I know you're a savage and all, but, you know, in 2023, you can't, you can't be saying stuff like that, bro, you know? People are sensitive nowadays. You, you can't be going around calling women weak, bro. But Tsunade was like, all right, nigga, I, I'll show you who's a weak woman. I'm about to beat your ass. And releases her seal of 100 healing. And Madara's like, 100 healing? Nigga, I've never heard of that shit. But then Tsunade launches an attack at him and starts cracking his Susano ribcage. But all this nigga's thinking is how much slower she is than the Raikage. But after that, he jumps up to do a fire style attack. And then they started jumping that nigga. And they actually broke the Susano ribcage somehow. After he falls to the ground, he's like, you know what, Tsunade? You're not a weak woman. And then this nigga starts glazing high. Hashirama again, like, oh my god, bro, we know he was strong. Shut up and get to fighting, bro. You're getting jumped right now. So now they got tired of this nigga glazing her grandpa. So she punches the shit out of him and removes half of his body. And while he's in midair, right? 
Gara uses a grandstand mausoleum again to seal him. And they're all like, oh my god, we finally got this nigga. But not two seconds after they say that, Tsunade gets stabbed through the ground. And everybody's looking like, hey yo, what the fuck? I thought we just sealed this nigga. But he pops up out of the ground like, wow, congratulations, you sealed the fucking clone. Now, could you sit here and imagine, bro? This whole time they were fighting, they were fighting, you know, as hard as they could, right? Trying their best against a clone. After getting stabbed, Tsunade breaks the fucking chakra blade that's inside of her, grabs it, and tries to attack Madara with it. But Madara grabs that shit and smacks the fuck out of her. And then even Madara got surprised when he saw her get back up. And then Noki tries to seal him with his particle style. But Madara's like, hey, hey, stupid. You do know that you have to hit me with physical attacks to even be able to hurt me, right? So why are you trying something so stupid? And absorbs it with his Rinnegan. And then he was like, you know what, bro? I just wanted to scare you guys with Hashirama's face, but it seems like that didn't work. And then Tsunade says this. And then Mai was like, hey bro, don't go, don't go calling us cowards because there's five of us. You know, that just that's just complimenting how strong you are. Like seriously. And Madara was like, oh really? Pulls out 25 wood clones, right? And it's like, hey bro, don't start calling me a coward either, because this is just a testament to your power. You guys are the five Kage. And then he pulls out his inner fleece Johnson and says this. I have one question for you. Would you prefer for all of these clones to use Susano against you or not? Is this nigga serious? The choice is yours. Bro, this nigga really said, do you want the clones to use Susano or not? <laughs> the choice is yours! <laughs> Madara is arguably the most disrespectful anime character, nah. This is the definition of a reverse jumping. <laughs> five of them tried to jump one of him, so he made five for everybody else to get jumped. <laughs> Yo, this nigga is something else, bruh. The Kage were mad as fuck. And then Madara was like, okay, bro, you guys didn't answer, so I'm gonna have to answer for y'all. And made the clones use Susano anyways. <laughs> had a choice and he was like y'all didn't choose so i'ma fuck y'all up and he didn't stop there after the five kage defeated all his clones in their susano they went after him and tried to finally seal him but he was like nah and releases a full body susano and everybody was flabbergasted bro they was like hey yo is this the full power of a susano <laughs> but Madara was like, oh nah, I'm about to show y'all what it actually looks like for real. Then he covers his Susano in armor and summons the full thing with its blades and all. Everybody was already shocked as fuck, right? But then he swings his sword and destroys two mountain ranges with just one swing. And the Kage was just there like, damn. Hashirama was able to fight this nigga and win? Like, bro, after he dropped those meteors, I would have been out of there, bro. I would have stopped the fight immediately. But damn, they let it get to shit like this? But then Onoki was like, hey, bro, you had this much power left, but why were you hiding it from the beginning? But Madara was like, hey, bro, what adult would go full force when fighting a bunch of children? And on God, bro, if I was one of the Kage, bro, I would have just left because wow he called them children and honestly i could continue on with this fight but bro i'm gonna stop here this video is all right so look anime villain groups there are a lot of them some of the most popular ones are the phantom troop the espada the demon moons or the monster association from one punch man but the villain group of today's video was made solely for the purpose of jumping them. And I'm talking about none other than the akatsuki from naruto the akatsuki is now assembled I swear, bro, when they decided to invent the Akatsuki, they, they just had the purpose of jumping people. Especially the tailed beast, Bruh. which is what we're going to be talking about today. The Akatsuki just jumping every single tailed beast, excluding Naruto and B, because them niggas actually put a reverse jumping on them. The Akatsuki travels in teams of two, like I said, for the sole purpose of jumping niggas. And Pain is even worse. Bruh. He pulls up with five other niggas to jump you. And before I even get to how Sasori and Deidara jumped Gara, I have to pay tribute to the OG that is Jiraiya, because what they did to this man was dirty. Anywho, we still out this oh my god bro is this nigga coming out of the frog's mouth nasty bitch <laughs> what that mouth do stop it get some help anyways he's like infiltration complete but yo that was way too fucking easy bro it's a trap but then we pan to pain wow nice and he's like 
Hey yo, somebody's here. And from the feel of his chakra, he's pretty strong. Conan, using her paper, figures out it's Jiraiya that's here. The human path is like, wow, how nostalgic. Conan asks Bane what they're gonna do. And like, this man answers with literally no hesitation. Try to kill him if you can. Oh god, bro, Naruto should've boomed your ass when he saw you, cause... What? Wow! Your former teacher pulls up. Not even going to say hi, but nah, try to kill him if you can. Anywho, Conan pulls up and attack with her paper. And Jiraiya uses a fire style attack. Cause if you didn't know, paper is not so effective against fire. After the attack, Jiraiya's like, I put out a lord to catch this nigga pain. But never did I think you'd be connected to him. I could have sworn you niggas died. And he's asking, who the fuck is pain anyway? But Conan said that's none of his business. And attacks him with more paper. Why? Why? I mean, that's the only thing she has, but still. Why? He has fire style. Like anybody could predict. Jiraiya launches a fire style attack at her. And then he launches toad oil at her. Ew, where was he keeping that? But anywho, since she's coated in oil, she can't really peel apart her paper. And Jiraiya got her ass caught. And so he starts asking like, bro, what, what the fuck happened to the other guy? But she's not answering. And she's like, hey, bro, what the hell do you want coming back here after all this time? Like, bro, you should have done what Orochimaru told you way back when. They're talking and Jiraiya's like, I'm just honestly sad bro why are you guys you know affiliated with the akatsuki but pain shows up well one of the paths and he's like well this is just what i thought on my own bro and Jiraiya's like so i guess you're the one who became pain what the fuck happened to you but then pain's like that's none of your business cuh and he summons a giant ass crab and that nigga spit some weird ass shit the crab goes to attack Jiraiya, and he uses his hair to bind it and then he asks nagato bro what the fuck happened to yahiko and the animal path answered he died a long time ago buddy Jiraiya's like bro what happened to you man back in the day you weren't like this. And then this nigga goes on a tangent about pain. He ends his little tangent with this. I've grown from a man to a god. What did he say? Oh. Talking about some he's grown from a man to a god. Man, man, shut up. <laughs> Anywho, he goes to attack Jiraiya, but Jiraiya got out of it. And then does this. Either. I am Master Jiraiya. <laughs> If only this nigga knew what happens later in this fight, he wouldn't be acting like this. So yeah, Jiraiya summoned one of his toes. Jiraiya goes and say he's gonna try to enter Sage Mode, but he needs some time to actually summon Ma and Pa. While he's getting ready, the chameleon disappears. He opens up a barrier that can sense anything that enters through it, but the animal path just send a three-headed dog after his ass. The toad stops the attack, but nah, the dog splits into two others. So now this one toad is running the ones with three dogs. Like bro, even their summonings are into jumping people. Like bro, the Akatsuki was literally just made for for jumping niggas. No matter how many times the toad hits them with attacks, they keep splitting up until it became this fucking oh, abomination. Nah, nah. Jiraiya's like, bro, Auto we need to get the fuck out of here. And goes to leave. As here. they're trying to escape, the dogs end up surrounding them. And then they go for an attack. But the toad weaves that shit and jumps into the air. And they finally manage to escape, but that didn't last long because the dog found them already. Jiraiya goes to attack the dogs, but after he's done, Gamakin got got. Oh no, Gamakin got got. That's the name of the toad, by the way. But then Jiraiya does this. Well, I give up. Huh? Jiraiya comes back and he's calling Nagato uh, a rookie. But then he notices this big ass bird is dive bombing at him. Gamakin blocks the attack. That didn't last long. And now this nigga's running for his life. The bird is literally trying to bomb this nigga. He gets into this tunnel and the bird tried to block him. But Jiraiya burned that nigga. As much as he tries, the animal path keeps summoning more animals. And this time it's a fucking rhino. Gamakin finally manages to take out the rhino. And then Jiraiya's like, hey, bro, don't you think something suspicious is going on right now? And Jiraiya starts thinking. Like, bro, this man was really good at ninjutsu, so why is he only using summoning jutsu against me right now? He tells Gamakin to leave and that he got it now. And then he sent this motherfucker flying. We hear some talking in the shadows, and then three pairs of eyes start appearing. Jiraiya pulls up looking like some sort of eldritch horror, but that's what just mind power on his shoulder, bro. Jiraiya pulls up, and mind power are like, hey, where this nigga at? And Jiraiya explained to them that uh, he's hidden himself in an animal that can, you know, camouflage itself. So they decided to use creature detection to find the chameleon. And to everyone's surprise, they actually caught that nigga. Jiraiya uses a water jutsu and fuck that nigga up and left the animal path standing there. But the animal path uses a summoning jutsu and summoned two yeah. other niggas. So now we get to the Akatsuki's signature jumping. Jiraiya's like, so wait, now he's summoning humans? The animal path goes to attack Jiraiya, but get kicked in the face. And then Jiraiya launches a sage art. Sage art, 
They were like, wait, did we get him? But since the Praetor Path used his ability to absorb it, there was no oil there when they looked. And then Jira oh my god, bro. This nigga always doing some weird ass shit, bro. Why is he kicking his shoes off? Bro, look at this what man. Is what is this? Anywho, they decided to go do some close combat. And Jiraiya pulls up with a fucking massive Rasen gun. But as usual, the Praetor Path absorbs that bitch. The animal path goes and try to attack them from behind. But Pa uses a smoke bomb. And Jiraiya pulls in Uno reverse real quick. And goes to punch him. But he blocks it. And Jiraiya's like, wait, what the fuck? Even though he can't see, he blocked the punch. And then he starts launching hair needles. But he used the summon shield to block it. And Jiraiya's getting even more confused. Because there's no way this nigga should be pulling this off. Because he wasn't even looking at the direction he was putting the shield up. And he's like, those are not typical clones, bruh. And then they finally realize, hey, bro. They're all using the same eyes. After they realize this, they decide to retreat. As they're retreating, Jiraiya's like, Pain, what the hell are you? And then they're like, at least we know something. We can't use Taijutsu, and we can't use Ninjutsu. So I guess we're gonna have to go with Genjutsu. Jiraiya's like, all right, bro, I have a plan. But it's a gamble. They start using their Genjutsu, which is sound bait. And look at this dumbass going to listen to the noise. <laughs> they realize it's a Genjutsu. And while running towards the noise, right? One of the paths notice a fucking clone. And that nigga shoots a fireball at them. So the Predator path goes to absorb it. And that's the plan, because as yeah, he's boy. trying to absorb the thing, the other Jiraiya launches another fire attack. Which now means only one of them can see him. So now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. He goes and kicks the fuck out of the animal path. Next thing they know, they're all in a cage. Jiraiya finally manages to catch them niggas in a Genjutsu. Which paralyzes their minds and their real bodies can't actually move. And Jiraiya starts talking to them. And he's like, instead of bringing pain to the world, you fucking fucking idiots, I wanted you to use your powers to make the world better. But them niggas are just looking at him. And then Jiraiya says farewell and killed their real bodies. If you know, you know. Jiraiya says it's over and turn his back to walk away. But then one of the other paths pull up and is like, hey Jiraiya, didn't you tell me to never turn my back on my opponent? And he booms Jiraiya. He flies out onto the water and he lost his left arm. As he's realizing that, all six of them niggas fly out and hit the pole, which I think is disrespectful. But cool at the same time, so yeah. Jiraiya is fucking flabbergasted because that there's six of them niggas. And the devil path is like, pain is the name shared by all six of us. Who identifies black? Bruh. But Jiraiya is just shocked and reeling at the fact that, yo, why am I seeing this face? And he's like, wait, didn't you tell me Yahiko was dead? What the fuck is going on? And he also mentions the eye. And he's like, how is it possible for all of you niggas to have a Rinnegan? So now Jiraiya is just completely confused. And he's like, are you Yahiko? or Nagato. And he asked them, like, what What are they? But this nigga answers, we are, we are farmers. Bruh, 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 bruh. We are pain. We are God. And they go to jump this nigga. Jiraiya's asking why Yahiko has Nagato's eyes. But the other path is launching missiles already. Weep. Jiraiya Weep. is dodging for his life. Ma is like, Jiraiya, give up already. But Jiraiya's like, but I need to find a fucking opening to beat them. The Deva path attacks. But then two tongues come from under the water. Grab one of the path's ankles and pull that nigga in. The pains are standing there like, hey, what, what the fuck? What? What just happened? He pulled the animal path into his toad stomach. Jiraiya comes out of nowhere and attacks him with the Rasen gun. Jiraiya's there breathing heavily, but then the animal path pulls up and attacks him with a rod as a last ditch ah! effort. Jiraiya is in pain, but he's remembering something. He goes to check the body and he's like, yo, this is really Nagato after all. But once the headband falls off, Jiraiya's like, hey, yo, this isn't Nagato. I fought this man before. I was the one who gave him the scar on his forehead. And they're like, bro, the more we learn about pain, the less we understand. Jiraiya's like, I need to fight them again to confirm my uh, suspicion. Really, nigga? And he tells Ma and Pa to return home. Ma went home, but Pa stayed. Jiraiya pops back up and he's surrounded. But then as he looks around, his suspicions are confirmed. Those are all ninjas that he's fought before. And he's like, I figured out Pain's true identity. But then one of the paths come from underwater and grabs this nigga by his throat. And we get the final blow dealt to Jiraiya. And this was the most, the saddest moment in anime for a lot of people. A lot of grown men cried on this day. And Jiraiya did help out by figuring out that the real Pain is none of the, you know, bodies that he fought. And he delivered that to Naruto, which was great which helped them out. But moving on, we're gonna be talking about how the Akatsuki jumped the tail beast. To which, I'm gonna be paraphrasing some of these fights, cause if I don't, bro, like, this video is gonna be 50 minutes long and I, I don't want that. We starting this off with Daedora bitching Gara. So we start with Daedora in front of Gara, and his bird is in the air flying. He grabs some clay and Gara goes to attack. But he weaved that he shit and, and just jumped onto his bird. But damn, you see this jump? How the fuck did he do that? Anyways, Gara keeps attacking and chasing him with his sand. You think them niggas was playing tag or some shit? But Daedora passes through the village, and as the sand is passing by, 
Gara hops on that bitch like he was the Silver Surfer. Like, bro, look at this Frozone wannabe. <laughs> anyway, he's standing there looking at Datora, but he's chewing his clay. And bro, I, I know this this probably has been said before, but what does this man do with those hands when nobody's looking? Whoever was the person that invented this jutsu, bro, in the Naruto universe, you're a nasty nigga, and I know you didn't invent it just for eating clay, you weirdo. Anywho, Deidara creates two birds and launches them towards Gara. Gara tried to swat them away with his sand, but they was weaving back at- Bro, they, they was really weaving his shit. But as they got within range, he explodes them. But Gara created a fucking sand bubble around them to protect them from it. And Deidara's standing there like, bruh, it's like this nigga's inside of a fucking egg or something. But right from behind them is a giant fucking wall of sand. Gara goes to use the sand prison. But Deidara managed to escape by blowing a hole. But as he's falling, Gara still goes and tries to grab him. So he creates another clay bird for the giant arm to grab instead. As he's trying to fly away, Gara grabs his fucking hand. And Bro, this nigga Gara goes back to his old days as a kid. Honestly, watching this gave me flashbacks to what this nigga did to Lee. They reused some more clay to try and, you know, blow off the fucking sand. But it didn't work so well because Gara finished it and used the sand coffin. And there goes Gara's left arm. So now he only has one mouth to work. With. As he's flying away, the sand continues to attack. And now Dater is in a bind. He's like, damn, better be safe than sorry. I should have listened Are to my man sure Sasuke. And he's like, I only have enough for a homing attack and my specialty. So he decides to use his specialty, which is a C3 bomb. And bro, look at this nigga's face, bro. Like, <laughs> what's he looking like? <laughs> he's like, I think I'll just mess this place up. Sasori's just waiting there for this nigga to be finished. And he's getting tired of waiting. With everybody in the sand village watching this fight happen, which, why the fuck aren't any of the Jonies happening? Like, what the hell are you people here for? You guys are ninjas, nigga. Go Throw, throw attacks at this man. I mean, earlier they were launching arrows with paper bombs stuck to him, but bro, you guys are ninjas. Use some fucking ninjutsu to get this nigga out of the sky or something. But no, nah, they're all just standing there giving reactions. This is what I fucking hate. Anyways, Gara's attacking Deidara with his hand, and Deidara has the C3 bomb ready. And he's like, damn, it'd be a pain if the ants started, you know, interfering. Which, like I said before, why the fuck weren't they, like, helping in this fight yeah. to begin with? Anywho, yeah. he sends out the C3. It starts out small, but when he sends it out, it turns into a giant ass creature. The thing opens its wings and starts dropping. Once it got low enough, Daedra detonates. So yeah, but this nigga just nuked the fucking country. But Gara used all of the sand he could muster and managed to actually block the explosion. They're floating there, Daedara on his bird, and Gara in his sand bubble. And Daedara's like, now you're in range. And he explodes one of the small explosive birds that he had sent to Gara. Gara shuts himself in the bubble completely, but Daedara's like, that's exactly what I was waiting for. And that's when Gara realized something is tunneling through his sand, and it's a bunch of tiny clay creatures. And Daedara's like, fart! is an explosion and blows this nigga up while he's in his sand bubble by the way he put those clay creatures there when gara was taking off his arm but after that last attack gara was done for he falls out of the sky and Daedora grabs him. And yeah, that was the capture of Gara and Shukaku. Now we move on to Yugito and Matsutabi. And this time it's actually a jumping. After running, Yugito is staring down Kakuzu and Hidan. Kakuzu's like, all right, bro, let's, let's get this out of the way. But Hidan's like, bro, hold on, cuz. I, I, I gotta talk to Jashin first. And Kakuzu's like, oh my god, stop glazing that nigga. And Hidan's like, bro, look, I have no choice. I have Stupid. to do this. The laws are very strict. And he proceeds to pray to Jashin. Yugito's like, huh, you fucking idiots. You think you have me trapped? But it's the other way around. And she blow up the tunnel opening. She's like, now that I know you guys are both part of the Akatsuki, I can't let you niggas escape. Hidon's like, look what you did, Kakuzu. You walked us into a fucking trap. Kakuzu's like, man, it doesn't matter, bruh. This makes it easier for us. And then this exchange happens. I'm Yukito Ni of the Hidden Cloud. Okay. And you're through. Hey, careful. You want to watch making threats like that? When people get all full of themselves and start throwing around a lot of tough talk, it really gets me annoyed. And when I get annoyed, pretty soon I get mad, and then I lose my temper! Shut up, Hedon. Bro, Hedon is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, Hedon's like, bro, I don't even like what we're doing right now, bro. My religion says that I should be destroying everything in my fucking path. I may not look it, but I'm a very virtuous person. And then he says this. To have to resist destroying you is a huge struggle for me. Perhaps we can resolve this through negotiation. Through negotiation? Is he insane? <laughs> 
Yu Gi Oh's like, bro, is this nigga insane? And then he don't like, hey, bro, listen, just surrender and come with us, bro. But she transforms into Maratabi and goes on the attack. She smacks Kakuzu and launches a fireball at Hidon. He jumps out of the way, but it ends up destroying the whole building they were in. But after that, we didn't even get to see the whole bro, fight. Because oh what we my. see next is Hidon on the ground in his ritual circle, and uh, it didn't end so well for Yu Gi Oh and Maratabi. But moving on, we get to the Three Tails. Now, the Three Tails didn't have a Jinchuriki at this time, and they sent Toby along with Daedara to capture. So we start with two shinobi and they're like, alright, it's time for the report. But Deidara comes out of fucking nowhere and is like, well, that's news to me. And blows them niggas up. After that, he creates a bird and fly off. He goes to where Isobu is and creates a bunch of clay creatures and drop them in the water. He detonates them all so he could flush Isobu out. And he gets what he wants because Isobu comes out and starts looking at them. Toby's like, uh, yeah, uh, I think I I'm gonna leave the rest to you, baby. I'm getting the fuck out of here. But he gets attacked before he got to do anything. And now Toby's running for his fucking life. And remember, this was when we thought, you know, Toby was some goofy guy. In the Akatsuki. He gets dragged under the water and Isobu just starts taking this nigga for a ride. Daedara creates a clay fish and blows it up in Isobu's face, which also blew up Toby right along with it. But that seemed to do the job. Toby is being Toby, and then he says this. <laughs> So Daedara blows his ass up again And then they just drag Isobu along with them Cause they capture him Next we move on to the four tail Which is assigned to Kisame and Itachi To which any other tailed beast aside from Giyuki and fucking Kurama should be light work to these two. Anyways, we pan to Itachi sitting on the edge of a cliff with his Mangekyo activated. And then we pan to Roshi facing off with Kisame. They start running towards each other. Roshi uses a Kurojin style jutsu and launches scorching rocks. Kisame blocks it. Roshi's like, all right, well, I guess I'm gonna have to step this up and goes into his chakra cloak. So Kisame uses a fucking water style and creates a fucking tsunami out of Like, what is this? But he's just like, man, I wish you'd just allow yourself to be captured without all this fuss, man. They launch at each other. Other. It creates a bunch of steam. But as the steam clears, Kisame walks out and he's like, You finally settled down. And after a flash of lightning, we see the result. And yeah, it didn't end very well for Roshi. Uh, he took an L. Because Kisame was the perfect match for Roshi, Itachi didn't have to do shit. Anyways, we don't know how the Five Tails was captured and they didn't show how it happened. So we're just gonna move on to the Six Tails. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a true jumping in all its glory. Hey, bro, you know what I just realized? Pain is the only nigga that actually jumped their <laughs> <laughs> Pain is the only one that actually jumped the people he's fighting. With all the other Akatsuki members, it ends up being like a 1v1 kind of. With the other partners standing on the side waiting, you know, just in case something goes south. But Pain, nah, that, bro, Pain just okay, loves jumping bro. niggas, but that's the whole reason he made the Akatsuki. He didn't even need them. He could have just went and jumped everybody himself, bro. Why did he? He is the only one that jumped their fucking victim. Anywho, we start with Urukata looking at a mask. And I, and sure, I guess they took his friend out. But as he's standing there, a voice startles him and says the six tails Jinchuriki. And he turns around to see who and bruh. What? This nigga Payne pulled up six niggas deep, ready to jump the fuck out of Urukata. Bro, why are they all in the bush like that, bro? That is some <laughs> devious behavior, bro. They just standing there menacingly ready to jump this man. Payne should be put on the jumping hall of fame along with any Jujutsu Kaisen fights, bro. Because this nigga is a true advocate for jumping people. Anyways, Urukata's like, are you guys the ones that, you know, killed Tsurugi and his friends? And this nigga Payne just ignored the fucking question and says, I'm going to build a new world and I need you. Well, not actually, nah. I, I need a tail beast that's inside of me. And then he's like, now, Six Tails, your ass is mine. Your bird is mine. They launch some rockets after him, and Udakata starts running. And bro, these niggas do not care about the environment, bro. Look at these explosions. Udakata's on the floor, but these niggas are just pulling up. He screams and transforms into his Five Tail version. And Pain is like, ah, yes, there it is, the power that we're seeking. Udakata launches his tails to attack, but they all weave. And the Asura path opens his hand to pull out a bunch of fucking vibrators. I, I don't know what those are. The Naraka path pulls out the King of Hell. The Animal path summons this ugly ass chameleon again, and Pain tells them all to go. The human path goes on the attack and stabs his tail. So he goes to spit some acid at him. But the Praetor path comes in the way and absorbs the attack. Urukata stops out of nowhere and just starts lifting up. But it was actually the fucking chameleon who grabbed him with his tongue. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell. And Pain is like, Six Tail is ours. But after he said that, Urukata transforms into the Six Tails version. He slips out of the chameleon's tongue and launches at the Praetor and Human Path. And he actually got the ass real good. But as he's about to launch another attack, the chameleon launches his tongue. He slithers up the chameleon's tongue, wraps around it, and burns that shit with acid. And that made the summoning go away. Yeah. 
the other paths come and grab the human and predator path. Pain is standing there like, you know what? I actually expected a pretty good fight from you, so big ups to you. And jumps down. Urukata is mad as fuck. And then Pain says, come on, Six Tails. What? That Bro, what are you right. talking about, I think he said, about, come man? to me. And, and so the Six Tails came. But he used the fucking almighty push and blew that nigga away. Urukata flies into some trees and seconds later starts launching tree trunks at Pain. But he blocks them all. As he's finishing blocking, Urukata launches at him. He jumps in the air and throws some rods at his tail and binds them on the ground. Urukata starts charging up and getting mad. But let's not forget, Pain has a fucking entourage of niggas waiting to jump him. And so he gets bombarded by fucking missile and then the Asura path opens up his fucking head and bro is that a fucking orbital cannon or something what the hell anyways that nigga blows up as usual not giving a fuck about the environment after the flash clears we see a spiral of smoke and yeah that was the end of Urukata like I said at the beginning of the video I'm not gonna be talking about B and Naruto cause one I already about uh, I already about I already talked about Team Taka and how they got their ass beat by Killer B and then the next reverse jumping video I'm talking about how Naruto put a reverse Uno on Pain so yeah the Akatsuki were literally just made to jump niggas with Nagato slash Pain being the main instigator rarely do we see an anime villain group just made solely for the purpose of jumping niggas and of course the Akatsuki is one of the most famous villain groups around and they definitely fulfilled their purpose <laughs> bye